I'm Ronald Crawford, and we're standing on the corner of 24th and Lehigh. We're, and it's significant to me is because I lived here for the first 25 years of my life. He just wanted to be like the father that was never there for him. Left him alone, but the block was there for him. His mom getting that welfare for him. Justin Street is the street that I grew up on. You see the sign right there. Him and his brother in and out of drug wars, shots back and forth in front of the corner store, cooking up a quarter as his grandmother snores, running around with a loaded 4-4. Growing up as it is now, this was a very disorganized neighborhood. A lot of poverty, lack of opportunities, very few resources, very few stores with good healthy food, underperforming schools, and a lot of violence. His grandmoms never suspecting that her youngest grandchild was playing with lethal weapons. You know she old as hell, not realizing his life is cold as hell. His nickname in the hood, Lil Gotti, cause he only 14 and already got a body. When I grew up, um, I grew up in this environment, disorganized, dangerous. Um, <laughs> that's my PTSD, I don't know what that was. I'm a survivor of complex trauma. I witnessed domestic violence. My dad used to beat my mom regularly. I was always afraid. I was afraid in my home. I was afraid in the community. I never felt safe. And I didn't get therapy when I was young. <laughs> that was a mistake. I left here in about 1987. I couldn't get clean here. So I moved to West Philadelphia, got my life together. I went to a rehab and I got involved in a 12-step fellowship. And as a result of those things, I haven't used drugs or alcohol for the past 30 years and 10 months. Being clean for all that time was good. My life improved. I went back to school, became a counselor. And when I earned my master's in 2000, I came back to work here. So I've been working here since for about 21 years. I wanted to become the therapist that I needed when I was young, but didn't have. The problem is people in our society, men in particular, especially men in impoverished neighborhoods, we've been socialized not to express feelings. I'm supposed to be stoic. I'm not supposed to drop my guard and allow people to get in because when I become intimate with people in that way, they can hurt me or take advantage of me. Other um, barriers, bias in the field of psychiatry, people's distrust of the medical system, people's distrust of white people, which is a problem because 80, 90% of most of the therapists in this country are white. Hip hop culture has been impacted by gun violence, mm -hmm. opioids, mm -hmm. and trauma from gun violence and mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it makes people more willing to engage in therapy, makes them more comfortable while they're in therapy, and this can increase their therapeutic outcomes or just give them a better therapeutic experience.
Now, these young guys is like, they don't see themselves getting that old because it's so normal for all of their friends to die or go to jail at a young age. You see, you got your, your job cut out for you as a therapist to try to figure out how do you subliminally try to convince people who don't care about whether they make it to a certain age or not, how do you convince them that freedom is worth something, that mm -hmm. living a, to be an old man is worth something? And when I'm working with young people, I'm intentional in using the music that they like. But every once in a while, I slip in an old joint. Mm -hmm. And when I slip in your song, they don't know it was made 10, 12 years ago, just because of the language right, and the yeah. topics is so relevant for what's going on today. Yeah, I know people can relate to it. And I know therapists look for different ways to make things relatable to people to try to get in there and untangle some things, you know what I'm saying? And the, the fact that you actually could use the records and therapy and it's some type of benefit, that, that's a beautiful thing to me. We spend a lot of money trying to develop these programs to address these social ills, but I think we don't need that many because when you engage people in culturally relevant counseling, they heal emotionally and emotionally healed people aren't violent. Emotionally healed people don't break laws. And emotionally healed people don't use drugs. I love what I do, plus as a member of a 12-step fellowship, one of the cliches they had, you can only keep what you got by giving it away, which means you have to pay it forward. You have to help people. So in order for me to continue my progress in recovery, and, and, and I admit it's a progress because I'm still having challenges in my life. So I'm just a work in progress. So before I die, you know, I just work as hard as I can towards getting programming that can be staffed with therapists that I needed when I was young.